Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule. We are joined, as always, by Sirach Lofton, and today with Julie Grisham. My name is Ryan T. Husk, and we are celebrating Aaron Eisenberg. How are you guys doing? Doing good. <laughs> good. Awesome. All right. So, Julie, you are in Brooklyn. How's Brooklyn? Uh, cold. <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, but other than that, I don't know, Brooklyn's Brooklyn. I feel like if you've been, <laughs> if you've been, you know what that means. Uh, yeah, I've been there. You got red hair on that picture behind Ryan. Yes. Uh, with Aaron. Yes. And now I see that your hair is more blonde. That is correct. So how long ago was that picture uh, taken? That picture was almost exactly a year ago um i got really i'm usually a blonde but i got really sick of it around this time last year and i literally walked in a place and was like y'all do whatever you want um so the girl was like what about copper and i was like sure whatever um so we did it and then shortly thereafter i went to uh that picture was taken at northeast trek con in Albany, New York. That was the first day I met Aaron um, in that picture. And um, yeah, that was So the first really day special. you met Aaron, he was actually dressed up as in, in uniform with the makeup on. Correct. So I'm trying to remember if the, if his panel was before or after the makeup. I want to say, his panel was after because I remember after the photo op, I wanted to catch him later on to get him to sign it, which he did. Um, so I think he did, he and Max did the makeup first and then later on the, in the day, they, uh, they had a panel. Mm. So tell us what your uh, first impression was of Aaron when you first met him. Um, or take well, even further than that, actually, give us your first impression of Nog and then lead us up into that, if you could. Oh, gosh. So, um, I'll admit that at this time a year ago, I was, um, just maybe a couple seasons into Deep Space Nine. Um, but Nog was a character that grabbed my attention early on because, so much of what goes on um, in the beginning seasons of Deep Space Nine is pretty serious. You know, Cisco loses his wife in the first, in the pilot. Um, there's a lot of kind of heavy material, uh, but Nog was kind of this it, sort of comedic relief, um, but also just kind of, there was something about him that I sensed he was sort of destined for greater things. Um, so he always had my attention pretty much from the beginning. And his friendship with Jake um, was something that felt very special. Um, because up until then, I don't remember any two sort of like adolescent characters having um, a really special bond and relationship like that. So mm -hmm. there was something about that, you know, and their spot on the promenade and all that stuff was like just very endearing um, to me. So, you know, whereas all the other characters were we're in some pretty serious business. Like they were always kind of, you know, having their sort of mischievous side quests. And that was something that just resonated with me, I guess. Um, the funny thing is, is that when I met Aaron, I didn't actually know uh, that he had already been through Starfleet Academy. Um, obviously his costume is a bit of a spoiler but <laughs> <laughs> but like I just knew I just knew like when I saw him you know I wasn't to that point yet in the series but when I saw him I actually saw Max 
in costume first and I gasped and my friend that I was with laughed at me, but I was like, Oh my God, like the, the makeup, it's incredible. Like you'd be foolish not to do a photo op. Um, but Nog was actually, you know, closer to my heart than Rom. So I decided just to opt for the, uh, the photo opt with Aaron, but I would say the character from the beginning was very sort of intriguing to me. Yeah, um, definitely showed like a curiosity to, to to want to explore and to try to do something different. I, I felt like he was really curious as a character, not. Um, but I think it's interesting to me that uh, the first time you see Aaron is in makeup, because that's actually similar to my experience. Oh, yeah, that's right. So you essentially see him first in makeup and then see the real him out of, uh, afterwards. Um, tell, me, tell me about that. Like seeing him out of makeup after yeah, the fact? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had seen his headshot on the website for the, uh, you know, for the convention. That was really the whole reason that I wanted to go. Um, I don't, it's, it's kind of weird to say that at that point I already had sort of that much of a connection to the character, but I really just, I don't know. Like he just seemed like a very interesting person. So, um, you know, when he went up on, well, when I saw him in his makeup, I just like became very like, okay, I must have a photo op. And, um, I was so like, I think you can see in the picture, like, I'm just very, I'm really excited. A big <laughs> smile. For those of I'm you really at home right excited. now that are, that are just listening in and, and aren't seeing the video, it's a picture of Julie in a uh, Starfleet uniform and Nog in his uh, <laughs> Deep Space Nine uniform and full makeup, and they look very happy. Yeah, and the, and the way, Julie, that you're hugging him in this photograph, you've got one <laughs> arm wrapped around his shoulder, but the other hand is placed gently on his chest as if mm. to as if he was a big teddy bear and you were showing him off to your friends yeah. and his smile <laughs> looks like a very nervous smile yeah he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's not used to being treated like a teddy bear but tell, tell us about that moment but yeah. he is though yeah. like well, yeah yeah he was. he was so you know he was over there and and i gave him my ticket or whatever and i went over and i was so excited and but i was like trying to be you know cool and like not nerd out like too much that i was getting my picture with nog um but I was like, is it, I asked him first, I was like, is it okay? Like, can I put my arm around you? Because some, um, some actors are not okay with that. Mm -hmm. So I asked him and he was like, yeah, of course. Like y'all know how he is. And yeah. uh, it was just so, I was just so excited. And after the fact, he kind of hung out for a minute and, and spoke to my friend and me. And um, one thing that really, I'll never forget is that he thanked me uh, for taking the photo with him. And I was like, me, thanking me. Like, why are you thanking me? Thank you. And uh, it was just. Uh, why was he like, thanking you? Do you think? Or did he say? Because it, it meant, I don't know, because it, I guess it, he was, it he meant it. He was, he felt gratitude that somebody, you know, cared enough and, and wanted to have a photo op with him. And it just struck me as so very, um, I don't know. It was just, I'd never had, I've done photo ops before. I'd never had anyone thank me for, for taking a photo with them. And it just felt, I just, you know, I already loved the character. I all, and I wasn't even really, you know, that far in. Um, I already loved the character enough that I wanted a photo with him. But mm -hmm. I, you know, my, 
experience with him at that condi- at that convention really showed me uh, the kind of person that he was, and um, it was just really special. Now, Julie, uh, we have a lot more to talk about, but before we get to that, you've got a really cool necklace and a really cool shirt on. Can you show us that? I do. So this is obviously a Ferengi Marauder. A uh, micro machine that's been turned into a necklace. And this was my first piece of seventh roll merch. Nice. Um, you know, mm-hmm. it's And you also have a couple favorite. cool things back there that we can't really see. Are you able to go grab them real quick? Oh, well, I have a couple things here. Okay, um, and that. I can grab that too. Well, so. What do you um, have? Well, so I was at. Vegas this year and that's when I met you Sirach for the first time and that's when I saw Aaron in person for the second time and um so and I have this um that's from you us. know seventh oh, yeah. postcard that's got everybody's signature on it I really yeah. love that um my favorite thing that I have is this uh card this Jake and Nog (laughs) card. Nice. That's always. Hold it up a little longer. Let me uh, make sure that everybody gets to see that. Thank you. I think that's a good. Yeah, it is. That's the moment right there. Mm -hmm. This is always on display with all my stuff. It's my favorite. And then there's something that I made. I think what Ryan is talking about. Let me grab it. Yeah, please. And we'll talk amongst ourselves in the meantime. That was quick. Whew, what a relief. So, um, <laughs> what are y'all laughing at? Nothing. Please don't. Uh, we were looking at how fast it was. <laughs> Thought it'd take longer. So, um, <laughs> after Aaron's passing, I was sort of trying to do, uh, grief manage and this was something that I made um kind of a few days after um it's his uniform oh. when he was the captain mm. it's, it's, really just, nice. it's just like some acrylic paint on canvas but it was kind of healing to make it uh yeah. it it was a way to sort of honor him and you know, put my grief into something positive. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I made this and, and I'm always going to have it. Looks awesome. Thank you. That's cool. So is artwork something that you do? Is that what, is that another thing that you're into besides cosplaying? Um, I do make art sort of more so for myself than uh, I've had a couple of friends ask me to make things. I'm just an artistic person in general. Um, You know, I don't know. I do it for fun. Um, But I am into making art. Yeah, she makes a lot of really cool stuff. She's an excellent painter, and she works well with acrylics and colors. Right, Julie? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know that picture there with uh, Aaron that you have? Uh, it reminds me of the time when I saw him in base, and he was complaining that he didn't like the nose. Did, <laughs> did you have any criticism? Did he, was he saying anything to you about uh, his makeup and, and the prosthetic for the nose? He didn't say anything about it. He looked, he didn't even look like he, like, yeah, when you're that close up, you can see the makeup, you can see, you know, and that was kind of a cool thing about, you know, being around them. Anyone who ever has the opportunity to be around them in makeup, it's very cool to see what that looks like close up. But Aaron wears it so naturally. Like he just, when he was talking to us after and thanking me for taking the photo with him, like it just, it doesn't even register. It didn't even register to me as makeup or as prosthetics. Like it was just, you know, he, he wears it very, very well and very naturally. Mm -hmm. 
Now, Julie, uh, you also had some very uh, important and personal reasons for why you really liked uh, Nog and Aaron himself. Uh, Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so I was drawn to the character very early on in the show. Um, But one thing that I uh, kind of maybe the most important reason that I love the character um, is that we get to see his experience um, with depression and post-traumatic stress disorder in It's Only a Paper Moon, um, which I think the majority of fans feel is his strongest episode. Um, I, uh, for about 10 years, um, have struggled with depression and anxiety. Um, and at the time when it was happening to me, you know, I didn't really know a lot of people my age or anything who were going through similar things. I mean, I know that they were, but we just didn't talk about it. Um, so it was, it was kind of hard for me to, I never really saw people in the movies I was watching or the shows I was watching acknowledging or talking about, um, experiencing symptoms of depression and anxiety. Um, now I already loved Nog dearly before I got to that episode. Um, but in it's only a paper moon, you know, when he comes back without his leg and he's having to deal with all these emotions and, um, you know, mental sort of struggles with this change and with what he went through. It was one of the first times in watching a TV show that I felt like somebody was portraying like what I felt like and what I had been through. And, you know, it, it's, I think it's important for people who suffer from anxiety and depression to be able to see um, other people in a sort of format like that to know that they're not alone Mm -hmm. and to know that their heroes, you know, Nog um, and Aaron Eisenberg as a person uh, is um, my hero. And so to see people like that, um, to see characters go through those types of struggles, I feel like is very important and um, really a sign of and a show of strength and um, you know endeared me to the character in way in in so many other ways uh, so that was like kind of the thing that sort of sealed the deal that mm-hmm. you know that Nog was my favorite character and went through the, I remember like telling a friend early on when I was watching the show, they were like, Oh, just you wait, like, just wait. Yeah. You know, a lot is going to change and this character is going to go through a lot of stuff. And, and I didn't, I couldn't even begin to imagine that, you know, he would lose a limb in the dominion war. So when that happened and, and that, ap- I'm, that episode is just flawless to me from beginning to end. And, uh, I just think it's important for us to be, for people like me to be able to see that Mm -hmm. portrayed in a TV show. It's true that even before that, like you just love the character. He was one of your favorite characters. You're also the only person I know that consistently cosplays Nog. And you're the only person I've ever seen that cosplays Cadet Nog. And you even, uh, for those of you at home, Julie's got this perfect Cadet Nog uniform. And she even had me ask, uh, Aaron, I believe we talked about it on the show, uh, whether there were specific ways that the, that the boot straps or the boots were zipped up or mm. something like that. What was that, uh, Julie? 
Anyway, that's it just, was how, just <laughs> how perfectly she did it. So I've always, so as you can see in the picture of Aaron and me, I'm wearing actually the next gen era cadet uniform. Uh, yep. That's because my other favorite character in Star Trek, other than Nog, is Wesley Crusher. Um, it's kind of important to. We were doing so talk. well, Julie. We were doing what? so well. <laughs> well, no, it, it's important to mention um, Wesley because Will Wheaton actually um, suffers from depression and anxiety as well. And, you know, he was the first Trek celebrity um that i had exposure to actually talking about their experiences with that and being very open and candid about that and i was on the cruise last january and he was talking very openly about it and it just he will never know you know what that means um, I, i'm sure you know people tell him but it's like to know that somebody that you admire so much and who's in the public eye is willing to just say, Hey, this is a thing that I struggle with and it's okay. And, you know, day by day, I'm just getting by and, and doing the best I can. And, and, but I have this thing and it's, it's really, uh, it really means something. Um, but anyway, I've always been my dream to go to Starfleet Academy. Mm. So, uh, the, I have a, uh, next gen era cadet uniform. And then I also have Nog's cadet uniform. Um, it is Nog specifically. Um, that uniform was made, um, as closely as possible to visually, you know, what we could see the uniform is like. And mm -hmm. I got to show him that at Vegas this year and we got a picture together and he was checking it out and looking at the pockets, which he's always made a joke about. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it, I don't know. It was very, I'm just very grateful that we were able to, uh, have that time together in Vegas this year. Yeah. What was the joke about the pockets? I don't know. He made some joke in Albany last year about some, I was in that uniform and it had pockets and I don't remember <laughs> what the joke was. Like, it's just something about the cadet uniforms having, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Who knows? It was an Aaron joke, right? It was it an Aaron thing. Laugh. It's an Aaron joke. Yeah. Well, you don't even laugh. know if it's real, actually. He might have been <laughs> I don't just know that it was, yeah. yeah, I don't know that it was a joke. I just went along with it. Well, I'm glad that he got to see that, though. That he got to Me see too. the attention to detail that you put into it. And I, I don't know if you ever fully or as eloquently stated to him how important he was as you did to us just now. No. Um, but you know, I'm sure you did tell him at least a little bit. And, you know, I'm really glad that he was able to hear that and see, you know, the amount of attention that you put into the, the uniform and to his character. Did you get a chance ever to tell him uh, what he meant to you? Or did you just say, oh, my God, you're my favorite character ever, like we all do? I'm really, I'm really shy, like, with uh with the actors i like i don't know i didn't and um like i in albany you know i told him you know that he was my favorite and you know he signed the photo he was so kind um mm -hmm. You know, he was like, I hate that, you know, you pay for this photo op and then you've got to pay for me to sign it here. You have one of these other, you know, headshots of me here. I'll sign that too. So he actually, for the, the autograph, he, he signed the photo op and he gave me, um, you know, another, another photo who's very generous. Um, but I, I don't know. It's one of those things where, um, when y'all had the episode with Melissa, she talked about 
how it was that every time someone would, would come up to him and talk about uh, how meaningful his performance was in Paper Moon, how every single time uh, that was very moving to him. And I, I never told him really what it meant to me. Um, I guess because I felt like he probably heard it all the time and, you know, maybe it wasn't worth being yet another person, but it's like, you know, this whole thing goes to show that you have to say things and, Mm -hmm. you know, it's important to tell someone, you know, what they mean because, you don't know when you'll see them again. And I don't know. The only thing we ever talked about that I, so we were friends on Facebook and um, one time I was like, you know, I've always hated that at the, in the finale of DS9 that you're not there at VIX. I hate that, that you're not part of the lineup. That's right. Yeah. Um, I was like, that has always bothered me because of mm. all the characters who had relationships with Vic. Yours was the closest. Yeah. I don't know why um, that, that is. Yours was the most kind of intense. And, and of course, he very humbly said, you know, well, I was out there, you know, in the audience with everybody else and you know of Mm. course like he wasn't like yeah I know right like he he just was like it's okay and I was like well I just want and I was like well maybe I'm partial but you know I've always kind of wished that you were there um and that's the only thing I really talked to him about that was specific to something that happened on the show it's a good Um, point though it's 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 very true uh I don't think anybody would would argue with you about that that he did have the strongest relationship with Vic and he should have been there. I think at the end, I'm I'm always going to feel that way. (laughs) Yeah. But, um, you know, I do wish that I had said, Hey, Aaron, you know, um, your experience, you know, your character's experience with depression as shown through, it's only a paper moon, uh, was always, you know, very, uh, moving and very, uh, just meant a lot to me. I never, I never said that to him. He knew. And you're right that, you know, he never took it for granted. Every time he mentioned paper moon, whether it was publicly or just, you know, in in a phone call or just whatever it was, he always, was moved at the thought that other people were affected by it. He never took it for granted. Yeah. He never said, oh, there's another guy. I'm talking about Paper Moon. He loved it. He was just like, give it to me. I love it. It's beautiful. It's amazing. And, you know, and he felt really fortunate that he was able to portray, you know, a character in a story like that. Um, and we only have a minute left here. Um, and first of all, Julie, thank you so much for, telling us your story because i know it's not easy and uh Ciroc and i have been very fortunate that people are coming forward and just telling these uh very important stories and very important memories and thoughts and and moments in which they were affected by aaron uh so thank you so much for that yeah thank you very much julie and lastly um is there one last thing that you want people to know about aaron like an elevator pitch if you're in an elevator with somebody and they say, who's your favorite character ever on a television show? And you say, Nog. And they say, really? I've never heard of him. What's, what's the big deal? <laughs> <laughs> That's so hard to answer. I don't know. He, I don't know. Like, what, if they he, said, what if they said, what's the big deal about Aaron? What, what was he like as a person? Ah. Uh, just the best. I mean, just, just the fact that, um, you know, at New Albany, I'm sorry, in Albany, in New York, he, uh, there was a, an event later that night I saw him at and 
it took him a second, but like he remembered my name. And I know that so many people talk about, you know, how Aaron remembered who they were, but it's like, that is very special, you know, to somebody who's a big fan. And he really did make a point to make everybody feel like they mattered and like, you know, they were somebody worth knowing and worth talking to and worth learning more about. And that's what I'll never, ever, ever forget is, um, and something I think that we can all learn from is his genuine, you know, taking an interest in other people. Um, he was just very, very special. Yeah. I think that's a, yeah, it's very important that, uh, that you got it out there. You said a lot today and, um, I'm sure Aaron is, um, smiling, happy to know that he's changed another person's life and reached out to them in the real way. Um, part of what we do is entertainment, but then another part of it is, uh, therapy, it allows, <laughs> you know, allows people to heal yeah. and, 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 and draw, draw strength to go through whatever they're going through in, in their lives. So I'm glad to know that, you know, you've stepped out and spoken out about, um, you know, your anxiety and, and, and depression, because those are real things that a lot of, a lot of people are going through. And um, they, it, it's comforting to know that somebody else uh, is going through the same thing because it makes you feel less alone. And there's a lot of people out there that don't have the, uh, you know, confidence to to admit that they are going through some of these things. Um, so it's important that they hear that wherever they can hear it, because it, it's it's almost a reach out in various ways to these people hmm. who who don't have a voice or, or or don't have the strength to speak up and and make their voice heard. So thank you, Julie, for speaking up um, because I'm sure that's going to reach somebody else. Um, And that's how we keep the the ball going and, and keep the good, the good vibrations pass, pass down. I think Sirach hit the nail on the head when he said he, uh, he affected you the real way, not just as a, as a character or as an actor, but uh, as a person. And, uh, and the other thing is that, yeah, I mean, we we definitely appreciate the fact that you were able to overcome uh, your anxiety. I know it's not always easy to come up and record something for like 11 people to see around the world. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, you know, it's no small feat, you know, and so it does show what, what Aaron meant to you that you're willing to, uh, you guys are laughing a little too hard at that one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> a little too close to home there. Hey, it was pretty good. It was a good one. I'm sorry. It was funny. <laughs> no, but uh, but anyway, yeah, it does show what Aaron meant to you, and, and we thank you very much for that. Yeah. So uh, for all of you at home, all 11 of you, uh, thank you for joining us, <laughs> and always remember the seventh rule. <laughs>